Okay. Saja je nak panggil nama bagi ngeri sikit. <laughs> okay, so M, M is this, can be positive or negative. Q, we call it Q because we want to divide, right? Q is for the quotient. N, N is something that has to be positive. R, we call R because remainder. So when you have this, you divide M by, you divide M by N, right? And then you will have the Q. And when you do calculation, you have the remainder. So this is the division of integers. All right. So the first example is M. M is 16. N is 3. Okay. Then what we do? During school, right? During school is we divide, right? 16 over 3 is 5, 15 minus, right? And remainder is 1. Okay. So you will write 16 equal 5 times 3 plus 1. So the Q is five, the R is one, right? The Q is five, the R is one. Okay, this is what we have been doing even from long time ago. Okay, what if we have negative? Okay, what if we have negative? So example two, erase, yeah? Example three actually there. Okay. M is negative 11, N is five. Okay. How do you do this? When you want to divide, you, you don't do the division like this, but you want to write negative 11 equals, what do you multiply by five plus the remainder? Okay, and the remainder is always positive. The remainder is also positive. Okay, so R is, it can be zero if you can divide, but it has to be less than N. Okay, it cannot be more than this when you divide this. Because if it's small, you can add another one, right? Okay. Okay, so you cannot do this again, because if you do like this, you will tend to divide like two, 10, but negative, cannot do. Okay, you cannot do like this. You have to take one bigger, okay? Because this is positive. So you want this positive, you, ha you have to take one bigger. If you take this negative two, then you have to add negative one. So you take something bigger. So you put negative three and this is four, right? Okay. If, it's easy, right? If M is a multiple of N, Oops. If M is a multiple of N, R is zero, right? So M, N will divide M. Okay. And what does it mean? There exists k integer. There exists k integer such that 
k times n or n times k equals n. If you want to use this, you use q, right? Q is just a multiple. You see this one? R is zero. There is no R. When you learn somebody taught you how to say it, make sure you try and say it to yourself or to your friends. And divides M. Because when you had to present for your project later, you had to present like you had to talk, right? Or you have a research methodology, you don't have to present, but your PSM. You have to present, so make sure you know what to say. All this. Okay. If M is not a multiple, if M is If n is not the multiple of n, n does not does not divide m. Okay, that is how you say it. Does not. okay. There are few properties that is very useful. Okay, for this division. I will list some properties. You have to know how to prove it. Okay, you have to know how to prove it. Before, maybe you have seen it, but you don't have to prove it. Now you have to know how to prove it. Okay. If you have any question, please just unmute. Okay, please just unmute and just ask because I couldn't see sometimes chat. Eh? All right. It's another class lah. You can just angkat tangan, angkat tangan pun tak dengar. So terus, <laughs> terus unmute. Angkat tangan lama-lama. Ah, somebody else has to unmute and say. Okay. Now, this is the property. Let A, B, C, B integers. Okay. Let A, B, C, B integers. The first one. If A divides B and A divides C, then A has to divide B plus C. Okay. Now, to prove this, you cannot prove by specific example. You have to prove in general. Okay, this is what I mentioned in the first section of proving. So let's try and prove. This is not in the notes, yeah? The proof. Okay, some students, they, this is a noun, yeah? Proof. Some students put P R O V E, that's a verb. Okay. You need to prove this. This is the proof. Assume, so suppose, this is if then, so you will assume the first part, you will prove the second part. Direct proof, right? You don't have to write, this is a direct proof. You just put assume or suppose. Suppose A divides B and A divides C. Sometimes, to make sure that we understand, we write what we have to do. Proof, or sometimes we say show A divides B plus C. Okay, if you follow the step and follow the definition, actually the working is not that bad. All right? Okay. Since since A divides B, then there exists K in Z. You can write in words or you can write in symbols such that A times K is B. A times K or K times A is OK. And since A divides C, then there is 
I don't want to use so many letters, so I just use K1 and K2. Then, okay, this is the trick. Sometimes we don't know what is the next step. So we look at what we want to prove, okay? You want to prove A divides B plus C. Ni kata conteng eh, okay? Meaning you want to find M such that a times M is B plus C. Okay. You see what you have to do? You have to add. Right? You have to add. So try and add. Then B plus C equal A K1 plus A K2. Almost, right? Which is a K1 plus K2. Okay, then I call this A times M, M integer. But you have to double check. K1 integer, K2 integer, K1 plus K2 is also integer. Right? Now, you already get this. This, double it by kita conteng. But this one, you just think about that aside. Sometimes when you read papers or books, how come they know what how to do this? It's because they have thought about it before, but you don't see the scrap paper. Yeah. Thus, or therefore, because B plus C is A times M, thus you have A divides B. The, the proof is actually not that hard, but how to put it together, right? Okay. Then you can try for the rest. Write out the proof for B, C, and D. Do it now. similar. So instead of plus, you minus. It's very similar to the one before. Okay, while waiting, I will share again, just in case you didn't have time to do this. Okay, if you want to make this smaller, you can move, right? In Zoom, you can move and make this one bigger.
So let me do this. Let me share because you are all here already. Okay. Oh, dah. Oh, then there's no. 34 over 33. Okay, stop sharing. Okay. Okay, I give like five minutes. All right, okay, we go for B. Okay, say what you want eh? Okay, for B, assume A divides B, so A is K1, B, A divides C, A is K2, C. So B bigger than C, so you can subtract, yeah? B bigger than C, then what is that? A divided C. Eh, balik ya. B is K one A. C is K two B. Uh, B is bigger than C, so we can do B minus C. A1, A minus, K2, is B is 
dengan bunyi apa ni I don't know if you can hear it but kat luar sangat bising dengan lawn mower ok so K1 minus K2 times T right F times T B is bigger than C this is bigger than this this means K1 A bigger than K2A. This means K1 bigger than K2. Then you, you subtract, you get something in integer also. But it doesn't matter, it can be this. If you think about the specific example, this is like Two divides four and two divides six, right? Because there is a two, two times two is four. There is a three, two times three is six. And this says two divides four plus six. Okay, this is. And this one, two divides six. And two divides four, right? Six is bigger than four. So two divides b minus c. Okay, now we go to part c. Any question? Okay, 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 okay. Mana okeynya ni? Ah, dah lupa dah, dah dua minggu. Okay, now part C. If A divides B, so K1 times A is B. B is bigger, ya? K2 times A is C. Four, yeah. So by these two, you want to multiply B and C. Multiply. So B times C is K one A times K two A. Oh, actually, this is not N. This is not an N. This is an O. Okay, so let me rewrite this. If this or this, so suppose, suppose we have this, you have to use one by one. You cannot combine because it's O and not N. Okay, so if this, then you multiply by C. B times C equal, multiply by C, K1 AC, which is KC A, right? This K1 are integers. This A, B, C are all integers. Okay, so KC is also integer, call it M, so A divides BC, A divides BC. So I repeat, just now I thought it's an N, but it's an O, okay? So back to the proof, method of proof, if you have, if you have A or B implies C, you have to do a implies C and then B implies C. So you have to break up into two times. So the first one is I assume. Okay. So 
So first you assume A divides B. Then I, I skip that part, but you have to write out. Assume A divides B. So there exists K1 integer such that K1 times A is B. Another one is assume A divides C. A divides C, so there is this K2 integer, K2 times A is C. Okay, so two cases. So the first case, when A divides B, there is this K1 such that K1 times A is B. What do we want to show? We want to show that A divides BC, meaning you have to multiply B by C. I just multiply by C because C is just any integer. I multiply by C. So you multiply this side also by C on the right. Doesn't matter because numbers, they can put left or right, right? But matrices, no. Numbers are commutative. So you can put C on the right, C here, C here. But I want to see A times something. So that is why I move C to the left, okay? Multiply by A. And this is what I want to be in integer, k is integer, c is integer, so this is integer, call it m. So m is integer times a, meaning a device bc. So you do the same thing for the other one. So for this one, you do the same thing. So I put here a device bc. The other one you put, this one, still BC, right? So BC, because you want BC. C is already there, so you want to multiply by B, okay? B, you can put anywhere, but let me just write B times K2A. So K2 integers, B integers, this is also integer. Call it maybe n a. So n also integer, right? n integer. So a divides also bc. So this or this gives a divides bc. So this is how you should. All right. Now the last one. Last one is a little bit different because you combine. You don't separate into two or you don't add or you don't subtract. The last one says, if A divides B, so suppose A divides B, then there exists K1 in Z such that A times K1 is B. The other one is B divides C, so there exists K2 in Z, such that B times K2 is C. Then you want to show A divides C, right? To show K divides C, meaning you have to multiply A by something, integers equal to C, right? But you can see, you don't add, you don't multiply, subtract, but you can replace, right? So, okay. So from here, hmm, you can replace, right? Okay. Call this one, call this two. Substitute one into two, right? So B is A, this gives B is A, K1 is B. So from one, B is A, K1. So I substitute B is A, K1. Then K2 is C. Now I have this already, right? A, K1, K2 is C. 
since k1 is integer, k2 is integer. K1, K2 also integer. I call this A, M equals C, M integer. Right? So then don't forget to conclude because this is your answer. Thus, A divides C. Don't forget to conclude. So by step by step and using the procedure of proving, you can easily actually show what you want to show because you know already what you want to show. If you get stuck, think about where you are going. And sometimes you start from here, you want to go to here, but you don't know in the middle, you get lost. So start from here and try to connect. This is sometimes what you have to do when proving. Okay. The next one, I don't have time for the next one, but you have also seen this. Greatest common divisor. Greatest common divisor. Okay. Common divisor, what does it mean? Before we go to greatest common divisor, GCD, common divisor. Okay. Siapa tadi? Yang Osama, right? I call your name earlier, right? Osama, are you here? Yes, doctor. Osama, are you here? Yes. Yeah. Who else that I call your name today? <laughs> Salupa. Siapa? Farhan. Ah, bagus. Okay. Siapa yang raise hand tadi? Ya? Nama siapa? Tak nampak. Uh, okay, kucing. <laughs> Nur Iza. <laughs> Nur Iza. Okay, miau pun miau lah. All right. Isa, you can turn on your, not video, the microphone. Yes, Prof. Isa, boleh? Yes, boleh Prof. Boleh bercakap? Yes. Senang je soalan dia, tak takut. Tak dengar suara kan? Sekali keluar miau. <laughs> okay, my question is, if I ask you four and six, what is the common divisor of four and six? Siapa-siapa pun bolehlah jawab. Two. Serentak jawab pun tak apa. Just turn on your mic. The common divisor is two. Anyone? Fatana pun bolehlah. Fatana dah senyum tu. Two, Prof. One and two. Tak dengar. Prof. Tak dengar. One and two. Ah, two dengan suara siapa tu? Okay. One. Okay, one. One memang sentiasa, eh? Two. Right? How do you get the common divisor? Uh, how do you get the common divisor? Okay, the original or the official definition, if you have A, B, K in Z plus, K divides A and K divides B, then K is the common divisor of A and B. Right? If you have three integers like this, four, six, and two, if this two divides four, this two divides six, it's a common divisor. 
and it might be more than one, right? One is always, one always divides anything. So sometimes we don't want one to be included as the common divisor because one times A is always A. So one always divides A, all right? This is actually a simple question that sometimes it's too easy. Students don't know how to answer. <laughs> Why one device A, right? A integers, because there exists A, one times A is A. So one always divides all. Okay, so how do you find? I remember during my time at school, this is how I do it. I don't know how you do it. Find something that you can divide, right? The, the common one. So that is a two, so I put two and three. There is nothing else that can divide common two, three, except for one, right? So you stop there. So this is the GCD, right? This is the GCD. And you want to find the LCM later, lowest. So GCD is the greatest common divisor. LCM is the lowest common multiple. I will continue this tomorrow. But from here, this is the GCD. And the LCM is you multiply these three, two times two times three, which is 12. It's the lo lowest multiple that can divide four and six, right? 12 is the common one that is a multiple of four and six. Four times three is 12, six times two is 12. There is a bigger one like 24, but this is the lowest one. So LCM is... 12, GCD is 2. So I will give you more question tomorrow and also talk more about the division of integers. All right, okay.